Yo, what is up guys? BMX, hello. Welcome to the live stream. Same to you, Cuphead. Hello there. Man, let's turn this down a little bit. There we go. Guys, we're making so much progress here. Let's jump right in, check out what we've done so far. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Yo, Twisty P, hello, what is up? Welcome to the live stream, guys. Glad to have you guys here. Guys, for $2, you can support the channel by joining it. You get popcorn, you get all the emojis, and it helps me out. I love your streams, thank you. Thank you, Twisty P. You gotta show up more often. Guys, let's check this out. This is what the render is looking like so far. Now, I haven't really done anything with lighting. We're looking mainly at composition here, right? Obviously, textures aren't in. Lighting isn't a thing. Uh, but yeah, like... It's starting to come together. It's starting to look really good. What render engine am I using? I'm using Cycles. That's six? Thanks, man. Thanks, BMX. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm happy with how it's turning out. So the next thing that I really want to do, that I really want to tackle, is building a popcorn machine. So I've I've laid up the basics of the house, right? I think I'm pretty happy with like the outside of the building. I think I'm happy with this little like archway that we've made. Um now we're gonna start populating it with stuff. I'm gonna put like rags hanging down certain places, lots of cables and cords as per use. Um, but right now we're just gonna put a popcorn machine inside. Um, seeing that popcorn is like one of my favorite things in the world. It's a big part of our live streams. Uh, so yeah, Cycles is the best, yeah. I really like Cycles. Some people can do amazing things with, with Eevee, but I feel like I personally am able to make things better in cycles, so. So yeah. Couple things um, that I did off stream is I added this little sign post here. And I'm not exactly sure the placement of it, like it's all just placeholder right now, but I was thinking of like having some hologram sort of like sign here saying like uh, the show's this way or enter in or drive on in or something like something something cool for the sign there i was also thinking about putting a sign across the top of the building right here that could like rotate be different be something different every time uh by default i think it would say like popcorn two dollars uh but yeah so obviously still really rough i'm still sort of blocking things out but I thought for this live stream, for the next hour or two, I say we do like a really cool um, popcorn machine and try to fit it inside our inside our little stall stand here. How's your PC handling all of this? So with the new update to Blender. All right, so that, let me rewind. When you just have basic shapes like this, like there's no textures, it's just geometry, your computer handles it really easily. It's actually really nice. It's when you start adding textures and lighting that things slow down a lot. So that's why I did my best to build everything out. And then towards the end, I do the lighting and the textures. You can even do animations fairly easy before lighting and textures. Uh, so yeah, there'll be a little bit of animation with this popcorn machine that we're building too. Uh, so, so yeah, I'm pretty excited. Okay. So we want a little popcorn machine in here. And I was thinking, cursor to selected. So let's just, let's just block it out real quick. So I, I, I was I was feeling like a big popcorn machine. Maybe this is like the bowl that catches stuff. 
right here. And then... Here, let's... Uh, let's just snap the cursor to this, too. So when I add stuff, it's already all lined up. So then I was thinking of, I don't know, like a little, a little pot, like up here. Probably scale it down. That like, things are coming out of. The popcorn's like overflowing out of. I'm like still, still playing around with this idea. If we scale this down here. I was thinking of putting like a little fire. A little Bunsen burner. Wait, what happened? I must have not brought it straight up. So I was thinking of like a little fire Bunsen burner thing. And I don't want it to look like a, like normal modern day popcorn. Machine, so I don't think I'm gonna do like a glass walls that are like filling up with popcorn Cuz like I have a reference image of like what a modern day one looks like it looks something like this, right? Like it has like these glass walls pot here with it like overflowing I think we're gonna go for like a little bit more Star Wars like rundown grungy sort of take to all this <laughs> So so yeah, um, let's add, uh, uh, sure, a cube, bring it up like this, let's scale it on the X, and then we can move it on the X as well. So let's just, let's just block some stuff out and see, see how we're doing. So let's scale it on the X as well. Okay. So something like that, right? We have our little Bunsen burner. And this pop might be too high. We might need to bring it like lower to the bowl. But we'll see. Maybe you can put an orange area light on the inside of the popcorn machine. Yeah, I'm thinking like when we add in a little flame or a fire, we'll sort of light it up like it's glowing, like like it's a little fire pit almost. Rerun trading, first like? Thanks, man. Thank you for liking the live stream. That's helpful. It's like all those little things that really add up, you know? So, thank you, thank you. Okay, let's think. So we probably want a little thing up here. Let's scale this way down and bring it over on this side. So this probably is going to like hold this popcorn container thing, right? We can add a little mirror. So it's on the opposite side, like that. Okay. So I'm thinking this is gonna be like a bowl or like a big pot. Um, and that will probably like say popcorn on it. That's actually like not too bad. I think a lot of these things need to be moved down a little bit. So let's go into this view. I don't know, something like that. And then above it, let's see. This is a good song, by the way. It's the same song as like one of my last videos. These streams always make my day, to be honest. Oh, really? That's awesome. That makes me feel good. Maybe use a Veroni texture for the Bunsen burner. Veroni? I don't know what that is. 
Baroni texture? Maybe send it to me in Discord or something. Post what that is in Discord. I don't really know what that is. So I'm thinking for this. Let's see. I think that's going to be something like this. We add in a little loop cut, like right here. Come down. Grab this. We can scale this in. To something like that. Let's see. Yeah, that's not like too bad. I feel like we need to scale this whole thing down a little bit. Like right there, maybe? I think we should bring it way down. Yeah. It's in the shading tab. It's built in Blender. I don't know if I've ever used the shading tab. Ever. So I have no idea what I'm doing. Viewport display. Yeah, I don't know, man. You're talking about something that I don't know if I've ever used before. Okay. I mean, that popcorn machine's not like half bad, you know? Like, it's looking pretty good. Lol Rip, hi, man. Welcome to the live stream. The Verone texture basically adds holes into the mesh. Not actual holes, but just the texture. How do you do that? I don't, like, I was actually thinking that that could be really helpful, especially when I add, like, cloth and stuff. Like, it'd be nice if it was torn. I don't know. So let's see, if I go add and I search for it. Oh, I guess I need to, like, have a texture, right? The brony texture for the Bunsen burner. Do, isn't there like fire sims and stuff we can do? I don't know. Maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves. Because like texturing and stuff is something that I'm not even really thinking about right now. Yeah. In the shame tab, new material. Yeah. I think Cuphead. Hold on to this thought. So that in a week when we're doing textures or whatever, then I'll tackle it then. Um, right now I'm still sort of like working on building everything. Yeah. Okay. So. We can shade this smooth. Let's select this. We'll inset it a little bit because it's like a pot. Hmm. I think it'd be cool if there was like a tube coming out of it or something, like into the wall. That's like feeding it more kernels constantly. And we should have like a little butter injector thing. Hmm. Yeah, animating the popcorn, like, popping out and stuff, too, is something I've never done either, so we'll have to play around with that.
Okay. So we can add in a cylinder. We'll bring it up, scale it down to something right there. Bring it out. Scale it on. Okay. Let's put a little line cut. Come in here. Scale this down. Something right there. All right, cool. Maybe this is the butter injector. Hmm. Maybe make the Bunsen burner two separate objects. Yeah. Um. I'll get to that in just a sec here. Let me see. It's pretty dark in there, so we're not going to really be able to see it that much. So let's just focus on building, building something that looks cool. Let's think. So if it goes out, then it has like a little, little scoop. All right, cool. Maybe we could do like a cable coming in from there. You can't even really see this right here. Do I, do I care? Maybe we'll just have it peek out just a little bit. Like that. I mean, we might do different angles of this eventually, right? Like some sort of pan by to the screen. I don't know. Because if you're trying to add a texture, it will add it to the whole mesh. Well, you can add a texture to specific parts of the mesh, right? Like, I could subdivide it and choose what to add. You inspired me to start 3D, Twisty P? Thank you. That's a nice comment to say. I, I'm i like, I'm a noob still, right? This is only my third sort of project that I've done. But I'm glad you're liking it. Okay. So let's think. This right here, we could probably do something like this and bevel. No, that's not what I want. I think I just want this one and this one. We'll bevel these two like that. Okay. Then we can add a cylinder. We will move it up here. We will scale it way down. We will rotate it on the X by 90 degrees. We can bring it down here. Bring it over here. Okay, so this is perfectly centered. So we need to like move this to better better match yeah let's scale it up a little bit we'll grab this bevel this in something like that we'll grab the back G man it's kind of hard to see Grab the back G, we'll move it in to the pot, like that. And now we will mirror it on the other side. Simple mirror onto the other side, sweet. You could probably scale this up a little bit. I oh, don't know, like right there.
Grab this side. Move it into here. I mean, we can just bevel a couple things to... I don't know if it makes any sense to, but it'll just add a little bit of detail. Okay. Something like that. Okay. So now we have a thing holding a pot. Let's think about this pot for a second. So, if I scale this, except for on the Z, like how thin do we want the walls? I feel like it shouldn't be too thick. Something like that. Yo, popcorn. Yeah, man, you inspired me to start 3D. Maybe, I didn't even think of that. Can you tell me how to bevel? Because it's sometimes won't do anything. Yeah, so there's two ways to bevel. So this is a good example because we're about to do the pot, right? So there's two ways to bevel. Number one, you can add a non-destructive bevel. Non-destructive as in it's a modifier. You can come in here, you can add in the segments and the amount. And so, let's see. I have messed it up because it's, I got a sharpen on it. So let me unmark all of this. Okay. And I have a million segments. So what if we lowered this a little bit? Let's do this many. Anyway, so this is how you can bevel non-destructively. I think I should apply the scale. There we go. I was like, why is it acting all weird? Okay, so this is how you bevel non-destructively. So I have like a sharp corner here and I can change the amount, but uh, it applies it to the whole thing. So like on this, for example, if we only want to bevel this one line, I select this line, then I do control B to bevel. And you can use the scroll wheel to like choose how many segments. So that's how you, that's how you bevel. If you're wanting it to be like a perfect round bevel, you need to apply the scale like always. So if I realize the bevel's acting weird like it was here, then um, I go and I apply the scale. Yo! Uh, shirt. Yo, what's up, man? Welcome to livestream. Jimmy Reaper. It won't be Adam Baird if there is no popcorn. Exactly. Exactly, Byron. So, this has a bevel modifier on it, but I can still edit the regular shape. Like this. And it keeps the bevel modifier on everything. So yeah, the problem with adding a bevel this way is it's destructive, right? There's no way for me to undo this or like adjust how many like uh, segments there are. So I would have to delete this and do it again if I want to change it. So that's like the only problem with the destructive bevel. Okay, looking pretty good. Yeah. That is helpful? Great, man. So yeah, this bevel modifier, I can get rid of it whenever I want. And I can change it. It applies it to the whole shape, but... But yeah. If you do the... If there's too... If the bevel is too big, then it looks funny. So you have to basically bring it down to zero. And then slowly slide it up until where you want it. Okay. Sweet. 
And to me, this is looking, this is looking good. I mean, this is how small it is, right? So me spending all that detail maybe isn't the best use of time, but it's whatever. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah, for sure. Again, I'm not a pro at this, so I might be missing something that someone else knows. Okay, now let's make <laughs> basically a big pot, right? So I'm actually gonna add a new, seeing that the cylinder is pretty big, I'm gonna put this at 64 segments. We'll scale this up to match our other one. And then we'll delete our other one. Okay. So this one is our giant pot. So this could be a little bit thicker. We'll extrude it down. Um, I'm gonna undo that. Let's just hide this for a second. We're gonna extrude it down. It's like a big, deep pot. Okay. Oh, dang it. I clicked twice. So let's scale this up on the Z. Okay. Just because it's like going into the pot a little bit. I can probably bring this forward just to just a tidge to add some depth. Here. Okay. We can let's not shade it smooth quite yet. I feel like there should be a lip. You know what I mean? Like a little lip at the top here. So, so yeah, something like this. We'll grab this ring and we will extrude it ever so slightly out. Give it a little lip. Okay. This on the inside here, we should scale it in to make it more of like a bowl. And now let's add a bevel modifier. So let's do like three segments. So I'm like going way up on the amount, but what's stopping it is this lip, because it's so small. So if I want it to be more than this, I have to put my own like destructive bevel on it. Okay, cool. Then I think we like get some sci-fi text, write popcorn out and wrap it around. Um, but yeah. So now we have a little burner. Let's hop back out here. This could probably be down a little bit. Like right there. Let's edit this. Bring it down. Let's put in a loop cut. Come up here. Grab this. Scale this in. All right. Okay. Got a little a little burner here. Let's inset this. Extrude this down. Add a little bit of detail. Okay. And then this, we can just add a bevel to it.
So something because of the angle of the camera, these sticks that are like holding the burner and the pot, they seem really short, right? And I have to think like, is that a really a problem? When we put in lighting in here, is it gonna be an issue? Here, why don't we just put in a light real quick? <laughs> okay, so let's say there's like a light right here. All right, so let's hop out here, come into this view, which is looking pretty dang cool so far. Let's do a new texture. <coughs> Excuse me. Man, it's been a while since I've done textures. How do I change it to an emissive, an emissive texture? Settings, the placement, volume, surface. All right, here. Um, emission. Okay. Let's bump up the strength to like, I don't know, five? Oof. That's like real bright now. I don't know if I hate it. It's gonna darken up once we put in like all the rocky sort of like metal textures in here. Let's put it to four, just to lower it down a little bit. And let's render the image and see how it turns out. I'm mainly just thinking about in here. Like I haven't put any work into lighting or anything out here. Hey, I don't think it's looking too bad. It's going real slow. I think it's because of the light bounces or something. Like, I only have it set to 300 samples, but it's... And it's only at 100 right now. Maybe even a uh, 300 is too much. Like, look, there's no textures. There's only like three lights in the scene and it's already taken this long. So I think the number of light bounces is too high. I think I could turn the number of light bounces down. Okay. So like, look at that. That's not too bad. I don't think it bothers me. Like these little sticks holding it out from the wall. I think it's I think it's totally fine. Looks good. Yo, Lynn. Line. I don't know how to say your name. Welcome to the live stream, dude. Okay. Hello. How are you so good at this? I feel like I'm not, man. Like, these are just basic shapes that I put out. This is my third thing. He said, he said it right the second time. Oh, okay. Line. Cool. Welcome, Line. I think this is looking pretty sweet, though. And we need to animate popcorn coming out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Bro, you, you are really good. Be confident. Thanks, man. 
feel like I'm pretty good for how much time I've spent in it. Like, there's people that have spent years in Blender and... But yeah, I feel pretty good about it. Okay. So, we have our awesome popcorn machine. Okay, so I feel like we need a cable that comes out of this. Um, for like the gas to the burner. I feel like we'll have to put like a cable or something for like the butter drip feed. We can mark this. Okay. I think it looks pretty, pretty dang cool. Render, view, render. Yeah, I think it looks good. I'm drawing and listening to your stream. Awesome, dude. All right, now let's uh, make the popcorn animation. You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking instead of like a stick coming out to hold the Bunsen, I feel like there should be a bar. Like a bar that goes down like that. I think that would look cooler. That's like the thing I've been debating right now. It's just if that's what I actually want, and I think it is. So let's let's add it. For a second there, it didn't look like it was centered. Something like that. What are you making this for? So this is to celebrate hitting 10,000 subscribers. Um, we hit 10... I, I can't make these videos fast enough for how fast our channel's growing. Our channel. My channel is growing. Um, so yeah, it's to celebrate hitting 10,000, but the bigger purpose is that this will be the intro to every, every live stream. Sort of like the intro screen. Okay. So we have our bar. Let us add a cube. Bring it up. Scale it down. I actually think something like that. Scale it on the Y. Um, you're growing so swiftly. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I've been doing YouTube for several years, so it's not like it's not like this. It's not like there hasn't been a lot of work put into it, but. But yeah, it has been growing way fast lately. Okay, I'm still playing around. I'm still playing around. We're still not sh I'm still not sure if I like this idea. Scale it on the X. Let's see, GUI. Let's scale it on the Y. A little bit thinner.
Okay, something right there. Scale it on the Y. Make it pop out like that. Okay. Then we can add a mirror modifier. Okay, do I like it? I don't know yet. Let's inset this real small, bring it down like there. I don't know, what do you guys think? Do we like this better? I mean, I kind of like it better. Showing off that vocab? <laughs> Ever since you started Blender, you grew a lot? Yeah. I think... It was just that one video, right? That one video has gone crazy. So... If I grab just both of these... I just want to, like, round this. Let's apply the scale. Now do these. Okay. I feel like really this should be a sphere. So if we had a bo uh, bevel one. Okay. Let us add a cylinder. Bring you up. I guess I guess we can scale you down. Then let's rotate it on the Y. Just kidding. The X. 90 degrees. Scale along the X. Y. <laughs> Something like this. Okay. Where does it look good in the Bunsen? Something right there? Not the X, not the Y. Let's do scale, not Y. Scale. Something like right there. I don't think it looks too. Yeah, it got a million views. That's crazy. It's crazy to me. I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? I don't know if I love this part. I don't... I don't like hate it. If I grab... From here to here... Here... What am I doing wrong? Control shift. Yeah, I think that's what it is. So here, control shift. It's going like all the way around that way. It's frustrating. So if I start on this side, and now it's going around that way too. Oh, it's because it's the shortest distance. There's only like three points here. 
Okay. That makes sense. Okay. And then what if I bring this in smaller? Nah. Yeah. yeah. What if we put in a loop cut? And we can't do a loop cut. So what if we get the knife, go here, here, enter, knife from here to here, enter. Okay. Now we do the loop cut. And we can just grab this space now. Something like this, maybe? <clears throat> Put in a loop cut in here. Go into this mode. I cannot see anything. Delete these faces. Go back. Mirror modifier on the Y. Okay. We can apply the scale. Double this. Like that. We'll grab this, move this in, something like right there. That help out at all? Max, you like it? That's good. The lighting really helps bring out the shapes. Let's see. If I go into uh, my render settings here, light paths. I feel like this is too much, right? Should we do this like to eight? And then let's render an image. We'll see if it's any faster. <clears throat> yeah, when we add in like the fire and stuff, I think that'll be pretty good. What do you guys think about the placement of the popcorn machine? It's kind of like dead center in the window. Do we want to move it to the left or the right at all? I feel like to the left. We should move it to the left because there's going to be an animation here and I feel like it's going to draw people's attention and bring it a little bit more in frame would probably help. Yeah, it's looking good to me. Yeah. I think it's good. 
I like the bar a little bit better. Adds a little bit more um, detail to it. What was I thinking about doing? Was I thinking about insetting these? If I grab this. Ooh, this is gonna break, isn't it? I think I just need the knife tool. Or to put in another loop pad. Like right here. Now when I grab these, and I extrude them in a little bit. I mean, kind of got a strangish bevel in there. I could add destructive. Yeah, I could put some destructive bezels on it, but. Okay, this, let's extrude it down. Like that. This, what if we add a loop cut? Like right here ish? Grab this. And, for, and bulk this up just a little bit. Like that. Okay, so we'll have fire cooking the popcorn. You gotta animate the popcorn popping out and falling down into our awesome popcorn bowl. It's like a vat. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Okay. I think it's looking pretty, pretty dang good. feel like the only thing that we should maybe do is let's add a cube, bring it up, scale it way down. I feel like we should add a little something something right here. Yeah. Like this. Okay. 
mirror it on the other side. <clears throat> yeah, sure. Okay. All right, now let's add a plane. Bring it up, put it in the bowl. We'll scale it way down. And this is what will emit our popcorn. Do I want it to be a plane? Do I want it to be like a... What do I want it to be? An empty? Can empties emit stuff? I actually don't know. I've never done like an emission thing before. Maybe we should have a donut. Why not? What if we have a donut? And it was like here. And now it is time to watch a YouTube video. Because I have no idea how to do this. I think I saved it to my Blender Tutorials playlist. Popcorn Particle System. hit the plus icon which will add particles you'll see that it, a lot of random things go around it at the moment but that will be changed pretty quickly and if you play the animation it will just keep emitting objects and they have a very short lifetime so the first thing that we should change is the frame start to actually start at the right frame we can then change the end to when the emitter starts moving on and we'll want to increase the lifetime so that it doesn't just dissolve pretty quickly. We want it to last the entire length of the animation. So we can just enter like something like 250. Doesn't really matter as long as it covers the entire animation. And now under the render tab where it says Halo or Hallow, however you pronounce that, we change that to object and select the popcorn kernels. And you can now see when we play it, they all come out. Though they are pretty small so we can change the scale and hmm. kind of change it until it looks around the right size. We can also change the scale random so that some are smaller and some are bigger so that it looks a little more realistic even though it is a cartoony animation. You can now see- Hmm, 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 Let's see. Frame start? What if we did like minus 200? Is that possible?
Is that under physics? So number seed render. Let's add... Yo, hello, man. It's Tamari. Welcome to the live stream, dude. We're just uh, building our little popcorn machine. And I am struggling trying to get popcorn to come out of it. So yeah, that's what we're, that's what we're doing right now. So I think... <laughs> I think I had a cube. Bring it up. And scale this way down. What's the size of a popcorn? Here, let's let's just move this over here. So that's our popcorn kernel. Come in here. Nice. I recently started with Blender as well. Cool, man. Yeah, this is my third project ever, so I'm still like trying to figure stuff out. That's really cool. So eventually we're gonna um, shape this little ball to look more like a popcorn kernel. But let's see here. Animation. So we can just enter like something like 250. Doesn't really matter as long as it covers the entire animation at the right frame. We can then change the end like 250. Doesn't really matter as long as it change it until it looks around the right size we can also check the popcorn kernel the popcorn so under object so I come in here now where's the object render render object and I select our popcorn kernel over here. Hey, they're in there, but they're so tiny. Let's scale these bad boys up. All right, that looks like popcorn. All right, so now we just need to have it interact with the pot so that it actually fills up the pot. Kernels, and you can now see when we play it, they all come out. Though they are pretty small, so we can change the scale and kind of change it until it looks around the right size. We can also change the scale random so that some are smaller and some are bigger so that it looks a little more realistic, even though it is a cartoony animation. You can now see that the issue we're having is that the popcorn is all clumping together, which we don't want, so we can change this particle Let's properties. See. And hit the plus icon, which will add particles. You'll see that it, a lot of random things go around it at the moment, but that will be changed pretty quickly. And if you play the animation, it will just keep emitting objects, and they have a very short lifetime. So the first thing that we should change is the frame start to last the entire length of the animation. Hello, however you pronounce that, we change that to object and select the popcorn kernels. And you, we can just enter like something like 250. His voice sounds like a robot. Doesn't really matter as long as it covers the entire animation. And now under the render tab where it's in that setting and changing the- I, the problem I'm running into is it's not interacting with the pot. It's just going through the pot. going through all the pots. It's 
So, how do we get it to interact with the pot? Doesn't look like it's a restraint. Taurus, fluid, collision, no. Physics. Hmm. I don't know. Let's see. I love your YouTube video. You did a great job with the chess area. Thank you, man. Thanks. Yeah, I, I that was my first one ever. So this is my third one. So I'm still relatively new, but I feel like I'm learning a lot. He does sound like a robot. I think it's his like microphone or something. Okay. So I have a thing in here emitting popcorn. The problem is, is it's just flowing straight through everything instead of like pouring over the top of things. Um. So. Let's Google. Yo. Thank you for subscribing, Brian, on YouTube. Thank you for subscribing to YouTube, man. That's awesome. Right here. Let's see. So he makes a box, which is exactly what we're doing. The emitters just go through it. And then he did render object. Makes that the object, still going through it like I did. Okay. And then he adds collision. And then he changes the friction. Okay. We can do that. So I come in here. Add collision. And then we're gonna put the friction up. Perfect. Just all the way. All right. Wait, 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 wait. Permeability. Friction. Randomize. The actual. F I'm gonna choose the icosphere with the eyedropper. We can also increase the scale of it. Something okay. like that. Okay. Now, you can see that they are falling through our floor. If you press collision and also, if you, let's say, increase the friction so the uh, particles stay there, the problem is... Friction down here and friction up there. I think I just did it in one place. Why are there two frictions? Why isn't it working? Uh, do I have to turn on collision with this? Oh, I think I turned on collision with this. Yeah, let's kill the collision with that. It's the pot collision. There we go. Oh, okay. We did it. I was just doing it wrong. Sweet. 
sweet. So let's have the lifetime be like 500. Let's see. Should just add more and more and more and more and more. I should really experiment with simulations as well. Let's do 5,000. Come on. Overflow out. Velocity. Tangent. Object align. Dang it. It's a great feeling when you finally solve a problem. Yeah, except for I got it to work and now it's not working. Permeability? Like no permeability. Never mind. Bring that back down. Thickness inner. I'm just, like seeing it through here. Oh, maybe it's not inner. Maybe it's outer. Oh, computer is not liking that. Reset these values. See, it's like showing through the pot and I don't like that. Maybe I just change the thickness of the walls to be thicker than the popcorn. Maybe I'm doing this all wrong. What if we... What if we add a force field? A force. I don't know how to I don't know how to use force force fields anyway. I feel like I have to add it to here. Force field settings. Type one. Yeah, now I'm just like messing with stuff. I need to look at a tutorial or something.
Yo, BM BMX, do you know how to smooth out objects in Blender? Yes, I do. I have a I have a plugin called I do it with a plugin. I do it with hard ops. And you just click sharpen there. But how do you do it normally? By the way, Bruno, welcome to the live stream, man. Looks nice, thanks. Thank you, thank you. It's in here somewhere. Shading. Visibility. Lossy camera shadow. Viewport. No. Just kidding, I don't know how to do it manually. Yep, sorry BMX, I don't know how to do it. Maybe you can give me some tips? I don't know. Man, this is my third project ever, so I'm still learning myself. So, we'll see. If you have questions, I'll do my best to answer them, but there's a lot of things that I have no clue about. So they're not like interacting with each other, and that's the problem. See, they're like inside of it, each other. So it never fills up, they just stack on top of each other. BMX, you right click and put press, press shade smooth. Cool. You like select what you want to shade smooth and then you right click. Maybe try adding collision? Oh, well, I thought I did. Do that. Oh, try adding. I add a collision to the pot. Let me do collision here. No, they're still, like, inside of each other. Thickness outer? Friction. Damping. Huh. Click the sort of donuts and add collision there too. Yeah, so I, I have my donut selected. And I added collision. Do I need to add collision to this little guy? No, they're still going through each other. means that you have these particles going through the actual floor. We don't really want that, but we're still no. not gonna show the solution. You'll have to stay tuned for just a bit more. I want these to start pulling up in this box. And yeah. even though we would need a molecular add-on, there's a way that you can kind of fake that. So let me first go into our particle system again and let's work on a couple of settings. First of all, when you're working with particles, make sure that, for example, you have a, I don't know, 150 frame animation to make sure the end mm -hmm. is at 150 and the lifetime is at 150. That means that all of these are going to pile up after time. So now we're okay. going to go into physics. So the physics type, we're going to change it into fluid. Now, as you might see, as you might have noticed, our movements have started to change. They start to 
replicate a more fluid like simulation there are several mm -hmm. settings here that we need to go through and check out i've explained these in a prior video i think or rather just going through them very uh no the circle when the where the bubbles are yeah yeah i i had that selected too but i don't know what settings to do quickly but in this case, I'm just going to show you what to do in order to achieve that slight wobbling effect. We're just going to first start with the repulsion factor, which is the force or factor of the force of how the particles are going to repel each other. So each particle is its own world and they try to repel each other away. Stiffness viscosity is basically how dense the material will try to be. And as you can see, we already have some sort of pooling when it happens. The interaction radius is kind of interesting. So this means it, we are increasing the radius uh, around the actual particle that is trying to affect or trying to interact with other particles. And you can see it actually yeah. starts to, it's actually starting to look like it's pulling up. So yeah. maybe we can try and increase, let's say, the size of these just a bit more so you can have a better view of what's happening. So you can see we have this nice little pooling effect and if yeah. you leave it for a couple of seconds more let's put them to 200 like that and you will notice that they also start to spill over almost so let's increase the end of our animation there and you can see this spillage so it's almost like a fluid but you set it up as a solid it's such a weird Hmm. way of working around it but it works kind of like with the vanilla settings it works mm. so this is basically it what you need for these so you leave the stiffness so you leave the stiffness and viscosity the important ones are the repulsion factor the vis the stiffness I like this doesn't quite hit it we'll save it just in case i need to come back to it the interaction distance let's go back to our robot guy and now there's another issue you could see changing it to fluid and then going under advanced in that setting and changing the interaction distance okay so i think that's one thing we can do so come in here go to physics fluid whoa okay now it's going crazy Do I have a force field? Why is it why is it going crazy? I thought I got rid of that. Force field, no no no. Look at how crazy it is. <laughs> okay. So let's delete this particle system. Let us add in a new one. Let's name it to popcorn. Popcorn particle. Okay. Change it to fluid. All right. It's normal. We're just resetting because I feel like I messed something up and I don't want to spend all that time just trying to fix it. 
Uh, source. Fluid. How do I, where do I select? Hit the plus icon, which will add particles. You'll see that it, a lot yep. of random things go around it at the moment, but that will be changed pretty quickly. And if you play the animation. I'm going to turn it off just for a second. We go to render. Got it. So we go down to render object. And I select my popcorn up here. Scale it up a little bit. Oh my gosh, they're going everywhere. Look how big they are. <laughs> Why are they shooting? Why are they shooting up? Physics, one gram. Stiffness, buoyancy. Collision. What if I turn off collision on you? They're launching everywhere. So I think it's velocity, right? That's what I gotta that's what I gotta change. So come down here. Velocity. Yeah, they're still going all over the place. What if I made it like a hundred K KG? No, did not change it whatsoever. Viscosity. It's when it's a fluid. Man, the struggle is real. Popcorn for everyone. All I wanted was a simple little popcorn simulation. Maybe it's the donut? Here, we're killing the donut. We're going to add a plane, move it up here, 
Scale it, scale it down. Everyone does it with a plane, so we're just gonna do it with a plane too. Okay, we are going to add in a popcorn particle. And it does it as well, what the heck? There's no like weird things on here. Collision? <coughs> Excuse me. Man. I'm like lost. This is one of those moments where I spend so much time on like one little part. Let's see. Like this guy right here. He makes an emitter. And it just starts emitting stuff. Is there like a gravity setting somewhere? Okay, changes the lifetime. Render, halo. You know what I think it is? The scale? So I come, I came down here, I chose object, then I put the size way up. Yeah, this seems like relatively normal. Oh, it's because I haven't applied the scale here. That's gotta be it, right? No? That wasn't it. Like, look, it's... It's shooting them out the same amount, but when I increase the scale, it shoots them out more. There we go. So the stiffness? So if I increase the scale... Then I lower the stiffness. Mass is like 0 0.01 kg, like it's super. No, not the viscosity.
Okay, that's about the right size. Okay. I feel like that's way easier now. I like this donut shape because it's like putting it all around the edges. We'll have to make sure that you can't see it from, from that. Scale. Except for not on the Z. Anyway. Apply scale. We are going to add popcorn. This is like so crazy. So we want the scale to be one. Viscosity, no. We're making like way more. Yeah. Okay, so we we make it way more. It's like 20 kg. Less? Like 2 kg? Less? Wait, why is it? Isn't it? No, I'm lost. Like, why? Why was it shooting all over the place? Here, let's undo. Let's just undo a whole bunch. Oh, it was point one. Okay. Got it. So we could... Now they're going like nuts. Okay, let's have it be like five kg. Hey! Why is it like blowing? Like I feel like it... It's kind of cool. Mass. Stiffness. Stiffness zero. Yo, thank you for subscribing, man. Ink. Ink, ink. Hey, welcome. Welcome to the crew, man. That's awesome. Okay.
Okay, I think I got some things figured out now. Now if we add, like, a wind thing and, like, slowly blow them out of the pot. Force field. Wind. Okay. So if we scale this down to inside the pot. Back to YouTube. So if I go here, let's do, where's fluid, physics fluid. Interaction. So it's under advance. Okay, we're gonna watch this at two times speed. Okay, so he's got his particles. He adjusts the scale. What did he adjust? He adjusted the scale and the scale ratio. Oh, okay, so that's like variance in it. Got it. Changes it to fluid. Boosts up the interaction a little bit. Okay. Okay. He yeah, adds a force field. Hmm. So I have a wind. E. What is up, man? QWERTY. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for subscribing, man. I hope you're enjoying the live stream. That's really cool. Welcome, dude. Okay, so if I go here, force field, re so if I do strength, oh, this is it. This is it. Oh my gosh. Look at that, man. Oh! We're doing it! Holy cow. I feel like this is too much now. Let's bring it down to like 300? Holy smokes. Lifetime, let's do 150. Just so they go into the barrel a bit more. Do 
man. It's looking so good. Some that just keep bouncing up straight in the middle. So I feel like I need a force field to sort of push them out to the sides. Or maybe we turn on collision with this. Collision. It's still kind of going into it. Collision, collision, collision. I could kill the collision on that. Yeah, man. Doesn't it need to be a fluid effector? I don't know. It, it looks like it's working, right? Like they're bouncing off this and stuff. I'm not sure. By the way, welcome to the live stream, dude. I think it is a fluid effector, right? Collision? I don't see any like fluid effector. I mean, I feel like I could move this down. And that could force it out. I feel like they're moving kind of slowly, right? They're kind of like floating. Let me just see what my settings are here. Start and 24 frames per second. Let's just do 30. Didn't really speed anything up, but okay. Huh. huh I guess it... I guess it works. Last time I used fluid was a while ago. A lot of the things I wanted to interact with the fluid had to be fluid effector type. Ah, interesting. Uh, 
All right, so let's try adding um, vortex, magnetic, charge. I think I just want like a force. And I want it to be up here. So what happens? If I come in here. Yeah, it pushes it away too much. It's still pushing it away too much. Okay, yeah, the force didn't really help. I feel like they're too floaty. Is that because they're too light? Do I have to change like the weight of them? Let's try it. So this is gonna be popcorn particle one. Come down here. We'll do the mass to like 20 kg. Then we'll grab our fan. And we'll bump the strength way up. No, that makes them more floaty. Okay. Let's come in here. We're gonna go back to popcorn. Well, then I don't know how to do it. So if I did one kg, Is it because of the wind? <laughs> Wait, what the heck is going on? <laughs> They're just like slowly floating up. Maybe this is the best I'm gonna get. Maybe it's like the bounce? Yeah, let's try playing with some of these other things. So let's do... Object Velocity? Yeah, that didn't really change anything. Physics, Mass, Stiffness. Okay, so stiffness is not the answer. Viscosity. Let's see. If I increase this now... Okay. Nope.
Yo, puzzle piece. Hey, what's up, man? Welcome to the live stream. This live stream is me struggling with physics trying to make a popcorn machine. Right now, it seems a little bouncy. And so I'm trying to make it so it kind of just rolls off. And I'm not sure how to do that. So I'm like playing with everything. Drag. Huh. Damn. Is this it? That's a little better. What if I did this and then increase the strength of this? No. Guys, I think that's about as good as we're going to get it. It still feels like it's moving slow to me. Minus one buoyancy, maybe? Let's try it. Where is that? Velocity. Tangent. Wait. I don't think you can do minus one. Yeah, zero is the lowest you can go. Let's let's play with some of this. The velocity up here. Let's Google it. Particle system move faster in Blender. You can find it in the Particles tab in the Properties window. Go to Physics menu. Okay, Physics menu. Time step. Is that only in... No. Advance. Springs. Time step. 
Right here. There you go. Nice. I think it's looking good now. Sweet. So it's just the time step. From a distance, it looks really, really good. Yeah. So this is going to be the frame right here. Looks great. Right, it's just balls right now, but we'll like make it look more like popcorn. Now the question is, is how do we get it to loop? How do we get it to loop so it's just constantly dumping popcorn? Yeah, I think it's looking pretty good. Did you figure it out? Yeah, I did. I think it's I think it's looking good. Don't you? How long have you been modeling in Blender? Puzzle piece. This is my third project ever, so I spend about a hundred hours per project. So I'm at like two hundred something hours. Nice. Thanks. If I open Steam, it'll say I've spent a lot longer in Blender, but a lot of that has been like days of rendering time, so I don't know I don't think that number is super accurate. Yeah, man. It's finally, it is finally looking good. Collision, stickiness. I'm just gonna turn up the stickiness a little bit so that it doesn't bounce out. Wait, what is happening? Are you guys seeing that? Like once in a while there's a uh... Like this one. It came from like inside and flung out. Okay, maybe stickiness is too much. Let's just see. Any more gonna fly out? Okay, sweet. Let's bring it down to like, I don't know, 0. 0.4. Okay, cool. They were just like bouncing up and popcorn doesn't really bounce, so gotta make it a little sticky. Cool. I'm in Blender right now. Awesome. You should share what you're making on Discord. Okay, so
I think I would need to like watch a video on how to loop a particle system. But I think this is pretty dang good. It looks really good. I like, like, there's a couple that, like, bounce off things. I don't know, the random, the randomness is really nice. I feel like the amount is pretty good, too. Like, if it was just looping constantly, it'd be perfect. I'm not done with it. 10k, congrats. Thanks, Kyle. Kyle, Kale, Cooper. Hey, thank you so much. Welcome to the live stream, dude. Yeah, the channel grows faster than I can make these projects. So this is our 10... This is our 10k celebration. So, yeah. Loop? <laughs> MR, man. Guys, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm pretty satisfied with this uh, popcorn machine. I think it looks pretty cool. Yeah, it looks great. Two weeks, bro, that's insane. Keep it up, dude. Thanks, man. Yeah, the channel's been growing really fast. I think my number one concern is that people are going to think this is like a Blender channel or that I'm going to be doing these Blender projects forever. Don't get me wrong, I have like lots of them planned, but it's not like the main thing that I was hoping to do with this channel. But I'm glad people are liking it. I'm really enjoying this Blender, this Blender phase as well. All right, let's do a new one, and let's call this Popcorn. And we're basically going to take everything. I'm just going to hide all this. OK, go here. I'm going to select everything. And we are going to move this into popcorn there we go bring everything back whoa wowza okay so now I should be able to select everything here Select objects, and I can move them around now. Okay. So popcorn machines there. Yeah, it's tomorrow. I'm gonna share this first room I've modeled in Blender. It's pretty basic, but I'm happy with it. Yeah, come, come on Discord and share it there. Ah, oh, guys, I think it looks pretty cool. Is it too big? Let's scale it all down a little bit. Is that better? That might be better. Just posted it there. Let's take a look. I think, um, I think I like it a little bit smaller. I mean, it was pretty ginormous. Well, 
Cool, dude. That's awesome, man. It looks really nice. Here, I'll pull it up for us. Sick, dude. The lighting is really nice. That's awesome, man. This is your first room you've done? It looks really good. You did really good on the textures. I'm not sure how you made those, but they look really nice. The leather couch and everything. So with the popcorn being a little bit here. Let's select objects. We can move it a little bit more this way now. Yeah, yeah. If it's too big, call it industrial. <laughs> I don't know. I think that's a good size, right? I mean, I do like the idea of like this huge vat of popcorn. The, le the leather couch is basically black material with some other bevels and extrusion to make it look fluffy. Cool. That's really cool. I think I watched a Blender tutorial on how you can like make a shape and blow it up like a balloon. And I always thought that would be a good idea for like couch cushions and stuff. So you could like make the couch cushion as a rectangle and then blow it up. Um, and it puts in like the creases and everything for you too. Okay. Yeah, the popcorn is, I think it's perfect. The old, we just have to get it to loop, which I'm probably not gonna do today. But just getting it to loop is is amazing. Once it's just like looped constantly going, it's perfect. There's nothing more. There's nothing more that needs to be done. I mean, I could probably, I can easily loop it in a video. Nah, we'll figure it out. Thank you, I really want to get deeper into the program as soon as I graduate in a couple months. Oh, good luck with your graduation, dude. Guys. I'm feeling pretty happy about this. Let's, let's pick a good spot where there's like popcorn. Everywhere. Right there, why not? And let's render an image. Now there's like, I haven't done anything with the lighting. I just put lights in places so I could like see it because <laughs> the scene was pretty dark. Let's see how this is going to turn out. Cloth inflation? Yeah. I was looking at it because there's like some cool like sci-fi things you could do where it's like metal panels with like a cloth panel on it. So I was kind of like looking at that. This project is looking awesome. Thanks, McKenna. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it too. I'm really liking this little popcorn machine we put in. The popcorn machine was like one of the things I was a little bit worried about. But nah, it's looking good. Yeah. There's a couple... I mean, let's take a look at this. 
Look at this popcorn, man. Hey, I love it. I think it's perfect. Yeah. I mean, like, we gotta get fire. We gotta do, like, the cables and stuff. But hey, I think it's so good. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Awesome. So cool. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining the live stream. There's a lot of you here today. I really appreciate it. If you want to support the channel, by all means, just keep watching the videos. Um, there's other ways to support as well, like Patreon and joining the channel for $2. You get your popcorn. So, anyway, guys, thank you everyone for being here. And go break some legs, and we'll call it a night. <laughs>